Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. It's Jay. Uh, you know, one of the questions I get asked most in my videos, you know, the comments down below, is how I make selections in Photoshop when I'm doing fine art architectural images, when I'm processing them. And I always hesitated to do a video on it because I find the process to be kind of boring and tedious. But I do get that question quite a bit, so I figure I might as well do a video on it. Uh, and I'm going to be using mostly the polygonal lasso tool. In Photoshop, there are many ways of doing the same thing. And so if you have a different way of doing what I'm doing here in this video, uh, put a comment down below because we all can learn from that, including me. Uh, but with that, let me jump onto my computer. I'll go through a couple of images and I'll show you how I make my selections when I'm doing these fine art architectural images. Let's jump on the computer. Okay, so here I am in Photoshop, and this is a shot I took in New York City, uh, unplanned. It was just a, a building I saw walking around Midtown. This is a relatively new hotel that I think was recently completed. Uh, and, I, and I like this shot. I like the, the structure of the building. I like the directionality of the light, which really highlights the geometry and the shapes of the building. So this is kind of a pretty cool shot. Um, but when I'm processing it to make it more fine art, uh, I want to do, make some changes. And to do that, it is super helpful to have different selections. So I'll show you how I make those selections in this video. Now, when I've got an image like this where the lines are almost all straight, I almost always use the polygonal lasso tool, which is a series of straight lines, and I'll show you how I use it. The first thing I might try, however, is a, um, a quick selection. So I'm going to go up and choose quick selection just to see how it looks. So I'm going to just try to highlight, pick the sky. Um, and you'll see parts of the building on the left side, it did a really good job. I'm going to zoom in, by the way, by hitting Command Plus. You can see this side, the selection is very good. But when you get to the other side, I'm going to zoom in a bit more, the selection kind of cuts through the middle of the building. Now you can deal with that by, I'm going to make this, um, this circle a bit smaller by hitting the left bracket key. You can hit the option key and then choose the areas you don't want selected and it will take that away and hopefully find the edge. And so I'm going to do that and see what happens. And you can see for some of the selection, yeah, move to the edge, but there's other parts so you'd have to go in and, and start selecting it again. And honestly, it just takes too much time. I'd rather have more total control over it. So what I tend to use, again, is the polygonal lasso tool. Let me zoom back out again by hitting uh, Command minus. I'm going to deselect this selection by hitting uh, Command D on my Mac. Go back out a little bit. So I'm going to use the polygonal lasso tool. And all this is, and you see, is a series of straight lines. As you click, you can stop, change directions. Um, and by doing that, you can, uh, you can make selections. And again, when the lines are straight, uh, it's probably the best tool to use. When I do it, however, I'm going to zoom in quite a bit. If I don't, well, let me show you what happens. So right now, if I wanted to select the sky, right, I would line up this these lines right along the edge of the building. Try to get as close as I can. And it would be pretty quick, right? I'm just going around. I can choose the rest of it. When you get to the end, by the way, you'll see a little circle pop up. That's when you know you can close that selection. And from here, it looks pretty good. But if I zoom in, you'll see there are bits where I am really not on the edge. Uh, you can see in the left side, I'm totally missing the edge. If I go up here, I'm going through the sky. And so what I tend to do is when I'm doing it, I'll zoom in when I'm making the selection quite a bit. I'm going to deselect by hitting Command D. But let's start by zooming in quite a bit. And by the way, you can move around the image by just hitting the space bar. And a, a hand will pop up, and then you can click and drag. So let me zoom in again really quite a bit, get in very tight. And then I want to start on an edge, and I'm going to get super close to the edge of the building. In fact, I can zoom in even more. And even when there's a little bit of a notch in a corner, I'm going to try to get that right. 
And it's, again, somewhat tedious, but you know what? I'll get a cup of coffee, I'll put some music on, and I will just sit here and make these selections. It's actually kind of peaceful. When the lines are straight, you know, you can extend these pretty far. In fact, if you wanted to, you could hit the space bar and you know, make the selection all the way up here. Let me get him hitting space bar again. I'm going to slow down here because there's a little bit of a notch on the top of this building. See, I didn't do a great job there. And if that happens, by the way, you just hit the backspace key and you start over again. And if you ended up here, for example, oops, what do I do? Hit backspace key. And so then you get really, again, really tight, really close to the edge. And again, I'm using the space bar to, to move around because these lines are straight. If the lines weren't as straight, you would have to make a series of very short lines, which I'll show you in a little bit. Again, somewhat tedious, but, uh, but again, it's kind of relaxing if you just sit here um, and stay focused on it, put some music on, just chill out. Uh, and it's just cool to finish up. I mean, there's been some selections where I've taken, I probably sat here for two hours making selections. Uh, and I don't mind it. Uh, again, it can get a little tedious, but it's not so bad. Now I'm going to go out here. I get a little notch in this railing. And so I'm going to go down, make sure I capture that. Just a series of very short lines. All right, now I've done it. So I, now I can actually zoom back out again and just go around the sky. It doesn't matter where you go, just to the outside. And then when you close that circle or the selection, you do it and bam, uh, it's done. Now, I may want to use this selection several times. So I'm going to save it. So I'm going to go to uh, Select, Save Selection, I've actually done this several times, so I'm going to call it uh, Sky Test, just so I know which one. Now, there's one problem when I look at this. If you look, I'm going to deselect this, by, by the way, by hitting Command D. If you look on the lower right, I'm going to zoom in a little bit, there is this glass railing. Through the glass railing, there is more sky. We did not select that, so we need to add to this selection. There's a lot of ways of doing that. Let me zoom back out again. Um, but if you look on the upper left uh, of the uh, polygonal lasso tool, you've got several options. This is new selection, which I had already selected. Add to selection, subtract from selection, and then intersect. But if we loaded the selection again, let's go to select load selection, and we call it sky test, hit OK. If I want to add to the selection, I can simply click on this icon. And now, when I start making more selections, it will just add to the existing selection. So I want to come in and select the sky that shows through uh, this railing. And so you can see above, the original selection is still made. And now when I add to it, and I'm going to zoom back out again, now that's part of the selection. And so you can actually, if you wanted to, you know, save this whole selection, you could call it, you know, sky, whoops, total. So now it's the entire sky. And now I can start doing stuff to it. So if I wanted to darken the sky, as an example, I could go to an exposure adjustment layer. Uh, and it will just affect the, uh, the selection I made, the sky. I can pull back on the left, and I've got a much darker sky. Uh, if I wanted to add a gradient to that sky, I could reselect it. Got my gradient tool selected. If I want you know, the, the right side of the image to be a little brighter, because that's where the sun's coming from, I pull over, uh, and I've got a gradient. So once you make the selection, then it's really fun. Then you can start to play with it. 
Um, a couple of things. You know, this image obviously is one where there are, I'm going to just uh, get out of this. Um, this is an image where the lines are all straight. But what happens if you have an image where you don't have straight lines? Uh, let's look at one. So this is a shot I took in New York City. This is the Gilder Center as part of the American Museum of Natural History. Fantastic building. I have a separate uh, video on this one. But if I wanted to uh, select the sky, again, I might start with the quick selection tool. Let's go up to the quick selection tool. I'm going to make the selection. And for much of the selection, it does a good job. On the right side, you know, it's right along the edge of the building. That's pretty good. However, as we get into the brighter parts of the building, the selection kind of cuts into the building. And again, you can hit shift and try to get rid of that selection. And the, you know, the computer might do a good job, but uh, you can use the polygonal lasso tool uh, when the lines aren't straight. Uh, it takes a little longer. It's a little bit more tedious. Let me deselect by hitting command D. Uh, but let's just look at some of the curved parts of this building. So if I'm making the selection, I'm going to choose my polygonal lasso tool. I'm going to zoom way in. And I'm going to start making the selection. You know, remember, every curve is just a series of very short straight lines. And so when the, when the curve is not very pronounced, you can use longer lines like I'm doing now. Actually, there's some little notches in the building you could follow as well. Um, and as the curve begins to become a little bit more pronounced, you just shorten up those lines. Um, there's been times where I'm you know, going along very, very curvy areas, and I'll just use super short lines. Again, you can zoom in even more and just really shorten those lines. This takes a lot longer, right, because... Uh, I made a mistake there. I'm going to hit backspace. You want to be right along the edge. I'm going a little quick. I would probably go even slower if this was, you know, uh, an image I was going to be printing or something. And so you kind of go along just short lines. And when you zoom out, you know, you'll see my selection. You can't really see it here, but if I close the loop here, you know, that selection is pretty good. Um, and so it works pretty well, even with curved lines. There are other tools. There's the pen tool, um, which I just have not mastered. You can also use just the, uh, the regular lasso tool. The lasso tool allows you to draw curved lines. Um, for some reason, maybe because I'm using a mouse and not a pen, but when I try to get in tight and follow along the edge of it for some reason and I'm, I'm really trying here but i'm just not doing a good job uh it just doesn't seem to work for me there are other tools you can use a kind of magnetic lasso tool as well which will uh kind of hug the the, the curvature or the the outline of a building um again it's something i haven't mastered maybe some of you have i'd love to hear from you if you have but, uh, you know, in general, whoops, let me get out of this. I mean, just hitting escape. Um, <clears throat> let me go back to that original image. But, you know, this is the image. I'm going to deselect that. But when I finished up, this is what it looked like. So I was able to make various selections, mostly just the sky, because the building, again, was pretty well lit. Um, and I chose a couple other selections. But, uh, you know, I went from this, which is pretty good, to this, which again is more drama, maybe a bit more fine art to it, highlights the, the features of the building in a more pronounced way. Listen, I hope this video wasn't terribly boring for you. Uh, again, if you have other ways of doing this, I would love to hear in the comments down below. Uh, if you did enjoy the video, just give me a like, a thumbs up. Um, it does help the channel. Uh, and if you like this kind of content, Photoshop tutorials, fine art, architecture, photo shoots, landscape. I'm doing photo critiques now. Uh, just make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss future videos. Uh, and until next time.